after driving eight EVs at the Everything Electric show in London, I stuck around to see what's coming next. And here are seven vehicles, which I think tell us something about EV trends. Let's go. First, the Cybuster. It was already on display last year, and this time you could drive it. I didn't, but instead sat in the car. And both I and the person just before me had the exact same reaction. Well, this is seriously low. Like, sports car low. It's not my cup of tea, especially since I'm usually all about family EVs. That said, MG clearly had fun designing this thing. It's big, it's bold. Is it meant to be a return to their roots? If you remember MG as a brand of nippy little British cars, let me know in the comments if you drove it. I would love to hear what you thought. But the train I'm going for here is there is an EV for every use case now. And that includes GT style type of fun. Speaking of fun, there's the Renault 5, the car everyone was crowding around, and I suppose for good reason. This thing isn't just a car, it's like a full-blown event. Renault's gone all in on the retro hype, and they've got the branded cups and the t-shirts and the design details that make it feel more like a concept car than something that you would actually drive on the roadways. Except, of course, it's available now. I just love the closed interior. And space in the back? Well, <clears throat> let's just say I didn't bring a crowbar, so didn't try this time around. Still, I think it's the kind of car that makes you grin. And if it drives as well as it looks, well, then it's gonna be a hit. In fact, it's a top seller in France for the first quarter by some margin. There is no choice in the fun, compact, kind of urban cars that are somewhat practical, somewhat affordable. And that's good news. And that leads us on to the Inster. The Hyundai Inster is a small package, but Hyundai has squeezed an incredible amount of versatility into it. The front bench, yes, it's actually a front bench split in two, can move independently, which is wild for a car this size. And there's a clear sense of space, especially with the headroom. You step in and instantly you feel like you're not cramped, which you never guess from the outside. So, yeah, the looks are maybe not for everyone, but I kind of like it. Yes, it's a bit of a key car. And even standing still, it looks nippy. And I'm loving it in white. I think it's just clean and has this futuristic vibe. I definitely want to drive that one, especially on a longer journey to see how it handles. And of course, as we do on this channel, to check out how efficient it is. And my sense tells me that it's actually quite a bit more efficient than the Renault 5, and it's probably the smart buy. So yes, the Renault 5 tugs at the heart, but the Inster probably is the smarter choice because Hyundai is just stellar when it comes to delivering good quality electric vehicles that just make sense and are good for the customers. Okay, let's talk about the Ioniq 9. You've just heard I can go all fanboy on uh, Hyundai's smaller, efficient car, but this thing is an absolute beast of the gentle kind. As Doug Scarlett was pointing out, I'd be sweating just trying to drive this thing around London. Visually, it's bold. It seems to be designed for efficiency. Nothing like a silly old Range Rover. Oops, I just lost a few subscribers there. If you've got a big family and need something more like a van than a coupe, this Ionic 9 might make a lot of sense. In a way, it's the antithesis of the Cyberster, right? It was low and sporty, this is tall and practical. Yet Yandes design language still shines through. It has the big shoulders, the clean lines, the signature light bar across the front. Honestly, this is light years away from the Hyundai I once drove in California. I think it was 15 years ago. And frankly, from our beloved Ionic from seven years ago. Now they're pushing into new territory and I like it. So my train three is very simple. Hyundai and Kia are still in top EV form. Speaking of big, painfully big, Cybertruck. Seeing the Cybertruck indoors puts its scale into perspective. It feels out of place. 
The Model Y and the Model 3 look surprisingly small next to it. You can't help but wonder, what purpose is it really serving? The Cybertruck always felt like a bold idea, but maybe also a distraction. If you watch my test drive video on the show, you'll see that I was surprised by how much I ended up liking the Model Y. But with another delay on the more affordable Model Y, it's hard not to question where Tesla's priorities are heading. So how about this for train 4? Do EVs need Tesla after all? I didn't spend much time at the deep aisle stand. Being candid, I thought this was a want-to-be upmarket Porsche competitor, but only picked afterwards that the price tag would be sub 40k in pound. So from what I picked up, they've really gone all in on the luxury impression. I hear the charging speeds aren't the best, but you know, in the UK, for instance, if you got that 300 mile range, you're going to be charging once in a blue moon on a public charger, potentially. So Trend 5 has been a long time coming, and that is, of course, the question of the prevalence of good propositions from Chinese manufacturers. If you believe the stats in front of us, in Europe, there's still a lot more to do. The key brands are European and American, and of course Korean, not Chinese yet. 5% market share on the top 25 brands. None of the vehicles that are the top sales come from a Chinese manufacturer. So there's some way to go, but of course, this is a kind of backward looking view rather than a forward looking view. I suspect that's why we get to see a lot of those cars on those shows. They are trying to break into those markets. And especially if I look at comments coming from Australia, it seems that there is a lot of appeal and quite a big push. Now, before we wrap up, there's one last thing I wanted to show you, and it's actually one of the most important. It's not just about electric cars anymore. It's buses, delivery vans, service vehicles, the stuff that really keeps a city moving, right? They had their own stands at the show, and it's a real reminder of just how much electric has already been embedded into places like London. Would you rather have a bus like this? Or like that. So electrification of public transport and commercial fleet, in many ways it's not a trend, it's just the reality of what's happening now. And that's fantastic. I think that's it for today. I hope you found it somewhat useful. As ever, please show some love and click that like button, subscribe. And for now, thank you very much and goodbye.